Lesson 1.3, um, it says distance and midpoints, but actually I'm going to split this up. We're actually covering this in two days. So the midpoints will be covered next. So we're just going to work on the distance. Whoopsie. Portion of all of this. Okay, first quick review, or maybe it's not a review, Pythagorean theorem. The formula for the Pythagorean theorem is one of the most famous formulas of all time is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Um, and this only works with right triangles, so you have to know that you have a right triangle right here, otherwise this does not apply. And we also need to know that the c has got to be your hypotenuse. Hypotenuse is the part directly across from the right angle. It is the longest of the three legs, and it's called a hypotenuse. A and B are your legs. Okay, we just call it a leg, and it does not matter which one is A, and it does not matter which one is B. They're both legs. Okay, and those are the ones, and here's another quick tip here. These run into the right angle. This side runs into the right angle. Like if you bring them together, they come together and form that right angle. The hypotenuse is the one that does not do that. Okay? If I were to run this into this or here, I'm not forming the right angles. Okay? So that is a quick crash course or hopefully a review on the Pythagorean theorem. Um, moving on here. So this is about distance, and we want to find the distance between these two points. Okay, here's your segment again. And if I were to ask you in class what you would do, I would often have students answer something like, oh, I would say this is about a little less than one, and this is even a little less than that, and this is probably even a fourth, and there's just no way we can actually just go ahead and just piecemeal that together and just kind of guess around. There has to be a better method. Well, there must be a reason why I said something about the Pythagorean theorem applies to right triangles. You're like, what does that have to do with this? There's no triangle here. There's not, but I can make one. So I will go and extend. Oh. I have a little, I have a little, little tyke under the age of two, and he's just starting to make sounds like that a little bit. Oh. Oh, like that's so interesting. Okay, so there's your right triangle. Now this pink portion is now the hypotenuse, and these are the legs. So I could say A, B, and C. Okay, the distance of A is three units. The distance of B is five units. That's a B, not a six, by the way. And the distance of C is, well, we don't know. That's what we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem to figure out. So once again, we're going to use a squared plus b squared equals c squared. A is 3. I'm going to square that. The b value is 5. I'm going to square that. Here's an important thing when you work through this problem. A lot of times I have students who just write down that answer. Please write down c squared. Otherwise you're going to have an answer and then nothing to solve for. We want to solve for c. 3 squared is 9. 5 squared is 25. It's still equal to c squared. I don't know what c is yet. 25 and 9 is 34 is equal to c squared. How do we undo a square? We square root. Okay. So in other words, I need to find the square root of 34. Okay. I hope you all have your calculator next to you, but if not, you should have your calculator next to you. Get that together so you're, when you're watching these videos, you've got a calculator. So I'm going to take the square root, and this is a little backwards. I think I have to type in 34. And then the square root is 5.830952. Well, I'm going to drop it off at 83. So 5.83, and we do not have a label on this because we do not have inches or feet or anything like that listed. Um, you will have to pay attention to the instructions on what they say if it should be one decimal or two decimal places. And I think I'm looking at the assignment and I don't see that it says necessarily. I like two better than one whenever possible, but there we go, 5.83.
Okay, well this is all fine and dandy, but the truth of the matter is every we're going to do distance formula a lot. This is not a one chapter deal. This is not like this section, take the test, and then you're done. Almost every chapter in geometry you're going to see this pop up. So, and I don't know, usually students don't like to grab that graph paper. So we're going to figure out a way to do this without the graph paper. And it's a formula. It's called the distance formula. Da 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 da. Write this down. D equals square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. Okay, this is when we find the distance between two points. Like we might have point x, y, and then we might have another point x, y. We call these the ones. That's a comma, by the way. And we might call these the twos, and this is where our formula comes out of. And I'm going to show you that this is actually, this whole big scary looking thing is the Pythagorean theorem in disguise. Okay, you kind of think of it as an a squared plus b squared equals c squared. But what did we say? How do you undo a square? The square root. Okay, it's basically the Pythagorean theorem in disguise, and let me show you this, okay? And please write this down, because I'm going to kind of show you both. All right. Here is my endpoints. Okay? I'm going to do the formula. And it doesn't matter which one is 1 or 2, but I think I put down 1s on the other one. So I'm going to take x2 minus x1. I'm going to call this x2, x1, y1, y2. All right, x2 is negative 2, and then I do minus, no matter what, and then I put 1 squared. And then I do y2, which is negative 1. If I pick this one first, then I have to pick this one first for the y's. Negative 1 minus 4 squared. Okay? I can get my square root going there. All right, and then we have to be very particular. There's a lot of little math things that can go wrong. Negative 2 minus 1 is negative 3. I'm going to square that. Negative 1 minus 4 is negative 5. I'm going to square that. And now I've got negative 3 squared, which is 9. Negative 5 squared is 25. <laughs> this looks familiar, doesn't it? 34. Agreed? Um, square root of 34. <laughs> and if I type that in, Yes, you're like, is this the exact same thing? Square root of 34, I just want to write down this number again, 5.83 is our answer. Oh my gosh, it's the exact same thing as what we did. Aren't these the exact same points? 1, 4, negative 2, negative 1. 1, 4, that's this coordinate, and negative 2, negative 1 is this coordinate. Notice a few things here. We had a 9 and a 25. If I look at my distance formula, I had a 9 and a 25 that appeared out of here. The, the advantage of this to me is that a lot of times you're not just not going to have graph paper. And I think when students finally figure out and start getting comfortable, and you get comfortable when you practice doing it, you will most of you will choose this method. Okay? Maybe not. Maybe you're going to stick with the triangle. By the way, I want to show you that you can also make your triangle this way. Oh. That's a right triangle, and that's a three, and that's a, and that's a five, and then I, oh yeah, the same thing can happen again. All right, this is a different line completely, okay? I've got my endpoints. Five, negative six, I go over five, down negative six, and then negative four, negative two. Okay? If I, and I'm going to show you this the other way. What if I wanted to call this x1 and y1, and then I call this one x2 and y2? All right, then I would go 5 minus negative 4 squared plus negative 6 minus negative 2. Uh, maybe I should have done that yet. I don't want to skip a step on you. So I would do 6 minus negative 2 quantity squared. And this is equal to the distance. All right, if I continue on, I'm going to quick write this over here. If you see a minus negative, that's a big plus sign. Mathematically, I don't know if that's the world's greatest thing, but I like to just write a big plus over the top of it. Okay? All right. 
5 plus 4 is 9. I'm going to square that. Plus negative 6 plus 2 is negative 4. And I'm going to square this. Uh, be careful. When you type this into your graphing calculator, put parentheses and then square it. If you type in negative 4 squared, just plain old, plain old, it'll tell you negative 16. And we all know negative 4 times negative 4 is not 16. You've got to be smarter than your calculator. Okay, 81 and 16 is 97. Okay, so the square root of 97, and actually, I personally would prefer almost the square root of 97 rather than going 97 square root, but I think the book does the decimal thing. So 9.84. But I can't put down a 4. Why not? Because I have an 8 next to the 4, and that's going to change that to become a 5. So I should, if I'm going to go two decimal points, I'm going to put 9.85. If you're going to be a, a one decimal point, let's say maybe a worksheet or something says put it to the nearest tenth or round to the nearest tenth, then you would put down 9.8. Because then you would have an 8, and the number next to an 8 is 4, which is not large enough to push up that 8. So if you're rounding to the nearest tenth, it'd be 9.8. If you're rounding to the nearest hundredth, you're rounding, yours would be 9.85. And just look at your instructions and see what they say. Just a quick, quick little thing here. If I make my triangle, okay, I'm 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. <gasps> I saw that number over there. 9, and this is 4 units. 9 squared plus 4 squared equals c squared. Look at how that 4 came over there, too. I have an 81 plus 16 equals c squared. <laughs> That's the same as this. Oh my gosh, 97 equals c squared. And then we would say back to these answers. Okay, it is the same. So that formula is the Pythagorean theorem in disguise. And that concludes our lesson for today.